Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Carlos Cirillo Show. It's so good to be back. I know it's been a hot minute since my last episode with everything that's been going on in terms of my birthday week. I got to go away on a houseboat, uh, not to rub it in, uh, and that was really nice and relaxing. And then everything to do with the app, Sala, has just been nuts. Uh, Recording, editing, back-end stuff, getting everything together, parties, all of that. If you're on my Instagram, you will see all the fun. And if you want to be part of it, just go to Sala underscore wellness and be a part of it. But I'm back and I'm so excited. Uh, We're almost at 150. We're at 149 right now. And what a big milestone for the past three and a half years to be podcasting, be talking and sharing all of these tools, tips and wisdoms from amazing guests. And I'm so grateful that you're here. And this conversation is another epic one. Uh, in this episode, I'm joined by the lovely Nat Kringudis, who joined us on the podcast many, many, many moons ago, two years ago in Feb. Not quite sure which episode that was, but feels like forever ago. But I've gotten Nat back on and we got to talk about all the interesting things. So Nat is a doctor of Chinese medicine and acupuncture, two times best-selling author, host of the Wellness Collective podcast, entrepreneur, mentor, and mother of two, She's well-known in the industry as the hormone revolutionist. She does a lot of things, and she's such an awesome human. Um, I definitely get like a a sister vibe from her because we've done a lot of work together. We've done a lot of lives on on Instagram. Um, We held an event last year, women's wellness event together in Muldura. She's just an awesome human. So in this episode, we dive deep into how to thrive with stress Making wellness simple, how to find someone to help you reach your goals, how to make an extra hour in your day, why self-care is so important, prioritizing yourself, outsourcing things you don't want to do, and so much more. There was so much goodness in this episode. Nat has such a wealth of knowledge and wisdom. Every time we talk, I am learning so much. And I think the fact that we do have a friendship, it allowed for us to, to get stuck into different topics that you wouldn't normally think about, but also get to enjoy a conversation that's not just like question and answer. It was very flowy. We went into topics we didn't even know we we're going to go into, but it is super interesting. And very special announcement. If you want to be able to ask your questions directly to Nat about any topic, you can join us at my next live show on May 15 in Melbourne. So you can join myself and Nat, as well as two other guest expert speakers, Dr. Sarah Jane, who's been on the podcast, and Georgie Collinson, soon to be on the podcast, to talk about all things wellness, confidence, and self-love. The last live show in February was incredible. The speakers, uh, the value of content, the community that was there, and the energy It was so much fun and I'd love to connect with you in person and to be able to share an event like this with you. There are limited tickets available, so make sure you click the link in the bio for more information and to get your ticket. It's all going to be there and if you have me on Instagram, link in my bio, you will see it. Uh, This is an event not to be missed and what a great Mother's Day present as well. But in terms of the episode... I really enjoyed it, and I hope you do too. Welcome to the Carlo Cirillo Show. In this podcast, I'll be sharing conversations with amazing guests from all walks of life, sharing their stories, their tools, tips, and wisdom to help you level up in your life and leave you inspired, as well as leaving you better than you were before. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Nat. Hello. Old friend. I know, dear friend. Dear friend that I feel like it's, well, it has been a long time since we sat in this very room. I know, it has. Well, no one's been able to sit in a room, so we're back. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, we've done lots of online things. Yeah. We actually snuck in a, in a, a live event last year. And then again, went indoors and all the fun things that came with that. But I was looking at the picture that I posted of both of us from that, that chat just over there yes. on that table. We look... I don't know. I don't know about you, but for myself, I look so young, and I was like, "This is my first year of podcasting and doing all look the things." Look how wise you are now. Look at I, how I you've feel, grown. I feel like we've we've evolved. Yes, we're we're different we, humans. We are. I think we've upgraded is the term I like to yeah. use. We've all got to upgrade. Yeah. And I think we need to think about it like that too. A, a big upgrade because we've been through a lot of shit. Exactly. And I feel like people. Like to brush that away and be like, no, no, it's just all nice and good, and and yeah, it's been a bit rough, but it's like, no, there's been some shit. That's oh yeah, happened. there's a lot. There has been a lot to wade through, but we, like I said, in the process, we've all been upgrading, and I'm here yeah. for that. I'm here for a good upgrade. I think it's important that we call it what it is in, yeah. instead of pretend that it's not anything. So, I think we've up- upgraded on every level. We've upgraded on a cellular level, where, whether we like it or not. We've upgraded on a Emotional and mental level. Um, And I think collectively the world has had to upgrade. So there's been a lot of things and evolution happening all in a really small amount of time. Yeah. And and when else did an event like this happen where we got to up level? Not in my lifetime so far. (laughs) I, I, I want to say I'd like to just let that be it, though. Yeah, I don't yeah, do no. that again. It's all, it's all right, guys. We've, we've, we've had a good upgrade. I let's like yeah, let's enjoy it. it now. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> okay, the second part of my life gets to be lived now. I've done the upgrade. Just leave me alone now. Yeah. Let me just, you know, let that permeate, let it kind of marinate, and then I'll decide what to do with that next. But, yeah, I think, I think for a lot of us, I, I feel like there's so much PTSD at the moment. What if something else kind of happens? Well, we're on the edge. What if, yeah. We're on the edge and we need – our adrenals don't know how to return home unless we lead them there. Mm-hmm. So we've got some work to do, some work that we need to be actually aware of. Um, even though, you know, our subconscious says one thing, we need to actually be aware and bring that to our, our you know, aware state so that, you know, we can actually do something with it because whilst it's sitting in our subconscious, it's just traumatic. <laughs> And you just keep reliving the trauma. So I think, you know, particularly for people living in Melbourne, yeah. um, everybody is sort of, you know, there was, a, there was a phase where everybody was much kinder. <laughs> they were really kind and so happy to be in others' company. And I feel like that's quickly gone out the window and now we're back in and we've turned the calendar. And I know for me, we've turned the calendar into this, you know, middle part of the year and it's like full pelt ahead. Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to be a time we go inwards. <laughs> But we're all like, no way are you making me go anywhere in woods. We're all like full steam ahead for the majority of people anyway. So, you know, I just think we do need to lead our adrenals back to a safe place and the rest of the body will follow suit if we can just focus on that one thing and how to calm down our adrenals, bring our adrenaline, bring our cortisol down, then it's going to be much better. We cannot continue to operate at this level that we're currently Mm -hmm. at. And this is from a, a psychological point of view of like, because of that PTSD, is that why we're so, I guess, what, shot in we're terms charged. of Yeah, We're supercharged, I think, at the moment. I think, you know, if you think about 100 being, you know, you at your peak of, of stress and zero being, well, probably never. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say when you're born because that it, probably is stressful too. Oh, you're but, you crying know, a bit there. Yeah, there's yeah, a, bit there's of a little bit of trauma. <laughs> um, but, you know, let's say that we on average... Over time, as a kid, we kind of idle along at, let's say, 10%, 15%. And then we sort of – a new normal becomes uh, – there's that word, new normal. We don't really want to use that, but we're using it. You know, over time, we have more life experiences and maybe we start to idle in terms of our stress levels at 20%. Um, and then various events happen, but we recover. When we're in the peak of it, we might be at 50% and it doesn't take much to get us to 100%. But when we're idling at 15%, it takes a lot to get us to the top. I feel like everyone's been idling at, l- at least 50%. So to hit the, the top of that threshold is not that far. And the more we hit it, the more our body goes, oh, this is what we're doing now. This is how we live now. I stress to get an outcome now, whereas before I didn't need to be stressed about small things in my day-to-day life whereas now I am because I'm just so used to it I don't know how to not operate 
from that space anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just my normal now. So recognizing that, I think, and being aware. And that's, you know, you're right. It's on a psychological level, but I think your body is listening on a cellular level as well. So we have to change what we know we can and then let um, our cells, you know, be be led in that direction so that we can we can do better. Mm. And I suppose like before this time, it was like probably learnt about all of it and was where you were implementing it and maybe with your clients, and even myself, over time when it wasn't kind of faced with certain challenges and, and the baseline that we're in now. But then it became really apparent during this time and after, like the, the post event of everything happening how do we reduce that baseline like that's that's the simple one how do we reduce it we have to recognize when we feel overwhelmed how many times in a day do i actually feel like i'm overwhelmed and I, and be and start to become aware of that um and what if you can't change it but it's it's actually yeah. going oh, okay yeah actually you know being able to stop and go actually how do i feel yep i feel overwhelmed okay i you don't need to really do anything with that other than go yeah i'm back here again Yep. Oh, look, I'm back here again. How many times am I back here? Or if you don't feel good, stop and c- consider why don't I feel good? Chances are you're back in overwhelm again. So, you know, you can't fix something you're not aware of. Yeah. So the first step is awareness. You need to be aware that you're operating from that space. And that simple awareness is the first step. And also the second step to that is, well, what, you know, yeah, okay, I'm here again. And does it really matter? Does it warrant the overwhelm? Chances are it doesn't. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you generally we all have one stressful thing that's running in the background in any given moment. You know, maybe there's a loved one that needs attention, or there's a diagnosis that's not positive, or we've had some type of bad news. Um, but we then start to operate as if everything is bad news, mm-hmm. as if everything is bad. Um, so it really is up to us to to change that and be able to go, you know what, yes, I do have this one outstanding, big, overwhelming stress at the moment, but all the other little things actually I can't stress about because that doesn't keep me in a state where I'm productive, I'm healthy, I'm happy, and I'm, I'm not just here for myself, but I'm here for my loved ones as well. So, you know, we've got a responsibility to recognize that. And I think we've also glorified stress for too long we have definitely adopted the principle that if we're not stressed, we're not successful. And I want to blow that out of the water because it couldn't be further from the truth. You know, what's the least amount you can do in a day to be the most successful and productive that you can be? Mm-hmm. I challenge people. And I did I did a, um, I led a, a, a training class this morning at 3 a.m., mind you. So, you know, <laughs> if my words are slurred, you know why. It's not because I've been at the pub. <laughs> Um, and, and that's exactly what I was teaching them to do. Can, I wanted to teach them to have one extra hour of downtime, downtime a day. Mm -hmm. And to some of us, that is frightening. The idea of either being and sitting, doing something other than being busy, um, creating downtime or for many of us, that just sounds indulgent. Mm -hmm. So how can I challenge you? Can you have an extra hour? Mm -hmm. of downtime or self-care time a day and that's whatever you want it to be whether it's to go for a walk some people don't like that they see that as a chore so that doesn't count that would go into the working part of your day (laughs) right um but how can we schedule in i'm talking about you know whether it's if you like cooking cooking a beautiful meal if you like watching the tv watching something that's like mind numbing Um, if you in, you know, we have other practices that we should be doing and we know we should be doing, whether it's meditation or journaling or breath work or whatever it is that, that helps to keep you, um, in a high vibe state. But, you know, can you carve out another hour? I bet you could. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think also on the other side of that, especially for Melburnians, that's frightening because we've just spent so long doing nothing. Yeah. So it's it that brings up the PTSD again, but this time you get to do nothing or whatever you like with that, not within your four walls, you know, mm-hmm. not having to do yoga on the lounge room floor or um, having to work out how to, to give yourself a facial because you can't go to the local um, beauty salon to do that. So it, there's a lot of layers. There's a lot of things to unpack. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that one hour 
if you said to someone, like, it, it, you're not saying it has to be in the morning, it has to be at night. It's whenever you like, get to create it. Totally. Yeah. Um, and this is what I was trying to say to them. You know, the, the number one thing is how much downtime do you currently have? Mm-hmm. How much downtime would you like to have? And I challenge you to add an extra hour to the calendar as a starting point. So what I was teaching was optimization hacks, actually. And this was my first hack, creating downtime, Mm -hmm. creating, and especially for people that work for themselves or entrepreneurs, as we like to call them, downtime is you have to schedule that in. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't schedule itself in. No one's sitting here going, (laughs) hey, Carlo, I'd like you to actually take some time now. Mm Mm-hmm. Unless you do that and you realize that. So that's very important. Um, and then, you know, one of the, the other optimization hacks I will share that um, I was teaching was how do, we, um, how do we delegate jobs? How do we automate and how do we delete? And that was something I definitely have done in the last two years to the point where I would come into the office and I would sit at my desk and I'd be like, um... <laughs> I don't really have <laughs> much to do. Yeah. I think I've like, I've outsourced myself so much that, but it was so nice. Mm. It was so nice to actually finally kind of go, wow. So I learned the delegation like nothing else in the last two years. Um, and it's been so nice. I can't even tell you. Mm. So uh, that's from like a business point of view or is everything. that also in life? Everything. In everyday stuff. And you know. Yeah, everything in business, but also in life. You know, I had a, a really small home. I don't need a cleaner, yet I hate cleaning. Like I hate cleaning. And it. I realized it was taking me away from things I loved doing. Mm-hmm. So I bit the bullet and got a cleaner. And do you think I regret that? Not at all. I can do, I can be far more productive with that time doing something I love that keeps me in that high vibration state rather than sitting there bitching and moaning about having to clean the toilet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, and there are people out there who genuinely, and I, I love this, there are people that genuinely love cleaning mm. and they're the people that should be cleaning mm-hmm. and they look at it and they're proud and they, you know, they, they, they have achieved what they, they've done a good job. Um, so I just, there's always someone that's going to love doing the things that you don't love doing. Mm -hmm. So how can I find those people to come and do those things that I don't love doing? Um, Same with groceries. I resisted the online shopping for how long? Goodness knows why. Probably because in my mind it was going to take time to set up and I couldn't delegate the time to do that. And then once I did and I automated that, or I worked out also that my husband really loves to shop in the supermarket. He (laughs) loves those aisles, whereas I'm like, that's such a big waste of time for me. I do not enjoy this. So I delegated and automated. And again, free time. Mm-hmm. I created an hour of free time just by doing that. So these little hacks that slowly but surely help me to live in a high vibe state but do away with that and really recover from that PTSD, I think there's there's something to be said about creating space. Yeah. And it's like there, there is... Well, change requires doing something different. A new life requires that change, doing something different, not being stuck in what we've been used to for the past two years. I like the awareness and then like the ownership that comes with that. You're aware of it. You can't change what you're not aware of. You need to then own that, that this is happening because you're choosing for that to happen. What I find most interesting is then that next step for people. For myself, I sit there and I go, okay, I'm aware of this, it's not working, I need to do something different and I go do it. Right. What I've noticed is for a lot of people, they can possibly, when they get to that awareness point, they then go, I'm aware of it, but then keep doing it. Right. So I think it's not that you're not going to ever do it again. Mm -hmm. It's coming back to using that muscle of the awareness to begin with because you don't need to put any more pressure on yourself at this point. (laughs) You're sitting there going, I'm aware, now what do I do? I don't know what to do. Guess what? You keep going around in that perpetual circle and it's stressful as well. So I think the first thing is going, I know it's okay if I go back down that, you know, mind path again. It's it's not that I'm never going to feel overwhelmed or stressed out again. It's my bounce back rate. How quickly can I be aware and go, do you know what? What if, Carlo, what if you just chose to try and be an observer and sit outside and watch whatever's playing out rather than buy into it, buy into that stress? Because again, there's so many people that I'll see and they go, but I just, I'm just a stress head. 
And I'm like, but you're literally validating. Yeah, you're choosing it. You're yeah. choosing this. You are. You're choosing it. And, and you know, when it comes to what that looks like physically, what I see in the clinic, that is such a trigger for uh, so many of the conditions that I see women have, endometriosis, PCOS, fertility challenges, um, horrible symptoms around cycles. And that's confronting. And that's all, like, relates from stress, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Directly, directly. You know, I can say to somebody, your your um, period pain is a direct reflection of your stress levels. You know, pain is a result of inflammation. Inflammation is generally linked back to how well our gut is performing. Our gut is totally, you know, stumbled all over by stress. So it is a direct there's a direct relationship there on a hormonal level your sex hormones and your stress hormones they compete they don't well they don't really compete your poor sex hormones just don't get a look in your stress hormones come along and they say i'm here to f- i'm here to save the day i'm here to fix this scenario and you 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 and you you, you you're out you're out for now until we need you again till i can actually get a handle on what's going on and you can stay in that perpetu- pe- perpetual state for as long as it takes, maybe forever for some people. So it is, you know, yes, it's the bounce back rate. It's being being aware. It's um, being able to accept that that's what's going on. And then I think it's being able to be strong enough in your mind to say, oh, the old me would stress about this and I want to stress about this because that's what I know to be safe. But I'm going to try and step out of my comfort zone and I'm going to try and just not do anything I'm not going to react if it comes up for me and I have strong feelings around it you need to feel it you need to feel through it those feelings only last for 90 seconds at a time Mm -hmm. if you knew that a bad feeling bad's not the right word but an uncomfortable feeling was only going to last 90 seconds you'd just be like bring it on I can do this so I think that's part of it too. What are the emotions that are being fe- felt? What are the feelings that are coming up? And and starting to look at those, mm. um, and and being just aware that they exist and allowing yourself to feel through it. But I think stress is a superpower if we know how to use it. Mm-hmm. We're just not taught how to harness it properly, to utilize it. And the I wish there was another word. I wish we could compartmentalize stress, but it's so many things. It's so many things. We just put it all in the one basket. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's 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 not just running late or having a deadline or taking too much work on. It's what is your liver doing? What is your gut doing? What is your mind doing? Um, what's your environment like? What's your sleep like? Like there's so many facets, which again makes it overwhelming and stressful. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a perpetual circle. But, um, but I, I think people just see stress as being busy. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be a toxic relationship. It could be the person that you sit next to at work drives you crazy. You know, uh, it could be you don't like where you live or your house is a mess. Mm -hmm. So that's another great thing you can do. Um, If you're stuck and you don't know where to start and you've, you know, you, you, you know that you need to do something different but you're not sure, clean something out. Mm -hmm. Make space for something new to come in, whether it's your handbag, your emails, um, that nasty drawer in your house that sits there and, you know, where you shove everything when you don't know where to put anything. Just clean something out and profound th- – clean the oven. No one wants to clean the <laughs> oven. But that's another profound one. Like clean something out because it, it just creates a, a, a new spark and, and clears out something that's currently cluttering your life to make way for something new. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that if we take that, uh, I guess, assessment of our life and, and – Take a step back to the even that one hour, right? Of sitting back and going, where am I at in all of these areas of my life? Really, we we don't, right? And I don't have children. You know, I look at someone like my sister with four kids and, and has all the, you know, excuses they could say under the sun. But like you said, it's, it's always just going to be a matter of you'll continue doing what you are doing and those results if you don't take that time to step back and go, okay, what is my life like in this area? Like rated out of 10 type thing. And that's thing, actually and then... something that is quite confronting. I did it. Ex- I don't want to see it. Well, I did an exercise yeah. <laughs> a couple of years ago and it was a podcast guest and I read her book and you needed to actually, she separated out various parts of your life and how satisfied you were. Mm-hmm. And I would generally say 
in life at the time, I'm pretty happy-go-lucky. I would have said I'm probably 80%. I was probably around 80% there. Yep. When I broke it all down, I was not 80% there. I was probably, you know, how happy were you with your living situation? 25%. How happy were you with your relationships? 40%. Like when you broke it all down, I was like, wow, I should actually be unhappy. And maybe I am on the inside, but I've just got great coping mechanisms. Mm. So it was, it was, again, I didn't know what I didn't know until I actually broke it down. Um, and that, that again can be really confronting, but it was very useful for me to go, something's got to actually change here because whilst it's all, I can make it look like it's fine. It's actually probably not fine. Um, and, and having said that, the last two years have been such a gift for me being able to fix a lot of, well, fix is not the right word, but solve or at least move things in a, in a better direction as a result of the awareness that I then I then had that I didn't have before. So we don't need to be afraid of those things. We just need to allow them. Curiosity is the best thing mm-hmm. that we can we can be. There's no pressure with being curious. It does create space. Um, and there's no hard outcome that we're trying to achieve. So I think being very curious about what, why am I feeling the way I'm feeling or what, that's another way of tackling things that doesn't have as much pressure but really do, is quite expansive. Yeah. I think it's that mindset shift of being like, it's only this way to the curiosity of like, what else could I do? Or right. how el- how could this be different? And it comes from, I, I think that those first two steps of like the awareness and ownership mm. of like, if it is to be, it's up to me. Right. Like I'm creating this stress. Because again, we can all have the same situation, but we all will handle it differently based on our mindset, our beliefs and how we then view perspective yeah Yeah. and I mean you can go down that rabbit hole I like to say to patients what happens if that stress was put there to help you get an outcome that you needed and wanted and what would that feel like what would that look like could you be curious about what's on the other side could you be curious about what it would actually feel like to wake up in the morning and not be stressed could you be curious about also another technique I love to teach is that you know when you wake up in the middle of the night can you be curious as to why you're awake why am I awake? Like we get stressed out when we, uh, most people that, especially when stress is spilled into sleep, that will be, they'll be frantic in the middle of the night. You know, I can't believe I'm awake. I'm already tired as it is. And I've got this and I've got that, that I've got to do. It's just building it up and Correct. up and up. It's, you know, it's, don't go back to, yeah. what about if you were curious about, why am I awake? So I think, yeah, curiosity is another particularly um, good way of, of gently trying to change the, the scenario um, and lead out, again, what I started with, lead our adrenals back to home where they want to be, not operating from crazy town. And that's just not, like I guess, that that's super important for adrenals, but it's like it's all areas, relationships. It is. Lifestyle, all of it. Yeah, it is. It is very important for, for all of those things, definitely. But again, in my, in my world, in my scenario, I'm seeing the physical effects that this has on people in their bodies. Yeah, the accumulation. Correct. Yeah. Um, and what that looks like, like I said, is that endometriosis, is that thyroid issues. Um, we are seeing also a new wave um, of, of post-COVID um, conditions sweep through. And I think we're going to see that for quite a long time. Mm-hmm. Um you know, 30 to 40% of people who've had COVID are going on to develop long COVID. And what that is, what we're seeing with that is um, reactivation of previous symptoms. So for a lot of women that previously had, say, endometriosis and have been in a state of recovery for 10 years, they're getting flare-ups and they're like, but why? And it's Mm. like, well, because the long COVID is causing inflammation, which is then triggering that. It's It's a trigger within. There's other triggers as well. It can be that you're not fully recovered. It can be... Um, remnants of the virus it can be um, reactivation like I said of autoimmune there's lots of reasons why we're seeing that but I think we're going to see that for quite some time Mm -hmm. what's nice is that we've been able to watch the history of viruses and learn from that so we don't need to panic because we know generally what to do with reactivation Mm -hmm. Um, it's actually the awareness that comes with that to do something about it and do it, d- don't wait to do that. So I think that's going to bring a particularly new wave 
And I wonder whether we'll see other things that we haven't seen before arise as well, or that we haven't known of or, or diagnosed. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see. Curious. I'm curious to see what that what that looks like. But I do think that there's many layers to what we'll need to unpack over the next 10 to 20 years um, as a result of what's just happened, not just on that uh, emotional level of what we've had in the last two years, but also that the um, physiological level not psychological mm-hmm. physiological level cellular level um, within the body so it's fascinating to me mm. do you think it, it it's quite simple but we complicate oh, yeah. it yeah yeah like <laughs> it's all simple it's we and we over complicate and I mean I do this in my own life as well and I certainly am t- I am far from enlightened um, but we definitely love to over over complicate it and I mean there are so many things you can do mm-hmm. here's the thing so many things. And I said this to patients when I was consulting through COVID. We had the opportunity to see hundreds of COVID patients and test hundreds of COVID patients' antibodies. And I feel like what was interesting, when we had COVID, it was when you weren't allowed to have COVID. So you didn't tell anyone you had COVID. <laughs> if you started talking about it, I, I'd say we were one of the first maybe 1,500 people in Australia or at least Victoria to have COVID. Um, and... So we, I said to my husband, you know, I have a responsibility. I show up every day. I'm very transparent. You, we can't hide this. Mm-hmm. Um, what do we do? And he, I remember my mum was like, do not tell anybody that you've got COVID. <laughs> and I was like, this is not how I live my life. And so I sat on it for a couple of days. Also, I felt rubbish. So I didn't want to come on and be out there and be like we've got COVID if I didn't have the mental capacity to answer people's questions Mm -hmm. but what happened was and it's interesting because you know anyone that you see as an expert it's because they've spoken about something and they've got a story to tell generally and they've experienced many hours Mm -hmm. we didn't have many hours we haven't got many hours with this what we're currently seeing and doing so you know I get on Instagram and I'm like okay so we've all got COVID and this has been my experience so far. This has been my experience with the, the systems in place to support people. This has been my experience with my symptoms. We've all had different symptoms. Where, you know, And so I just kept talking about it and talking about it. And let it be known, I, do not want, I don't want to be an expert in COVID. I don't. But what happened was because we were pretty much for most people the only person that you knew or Joe Blow down the road knew that had COVID – Um, people were fascinated and then slowly one by one people started getting COVID. So they were coming to me, my inbox, I'm not kidding, was inundated with questions around COVID um, and what to do and how to support people and, you know, everything that we did was a support to COVID. I'm not saying that I'm treating or curing COVID, we were just supporting people through the process. And so it came to Christmas just gone by and I, I was just sitting there one of the days and I said to um, myself, there's all these people, my inbox is so full, how can I help them? I'll just open up an afternoon of appointments. I'll just open up four hours on a Tuesday. I was on holidays. It was. I love the period between Christmas and New Year's, you know, mm-hmm. when you don't know what's going on. So somewhere in that time, maybe it just after New Year's, I can't remember, but I was still on holidays. And so we opened up four hours and I said, you know, if anyone wants support with COVID, we've got 15 minute appointments. I would love to help. Those appointments were gone like that, like a half an hour, all gone. I was like, oh, okay, I'll open up all of Tuesday. F- 20 minutes, all gone. I'm like, oh, okay, I open up Wednesday. And I'm talking 15-minute appointments. Like mm-hmm. this is like bang, 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 bang. Open up th- Wednesday, open up Thursday, open. I'm like, this is my vacation. This is my holiday. <laughs> but the, the people were so scared. They didn't know what to do. They just wanted something, something some words of hope, something, and this is where I'll get to what I'm saying, is that there were many things that people could do at this point in time. But how could we be very specific? How could we be focused? And how could we do things that were easy, that were accessible, that were sustainable? Um, And so that's what I was focused on. How can I make it easy for all these people? Um, And in doing that, we had the privilege to support hundreds of people uh, through that process. And then on the other side of that, what does that look like for some people that are still suffering with long COVID? So it's just very interesting how, you know, you don't get to choose these scenarios sometimes. Mm-hmm. And especially in when, you, you know, you are in a place of service to people. 
um, sometimes the service chooses you. And I am really grateful for that experience. What's really interesting is that Rewind two years ago, you know, that was I got reported for treating COVID by some somebody who just was didn't like a social media post that I'd put out there, thought that I was claiming to treat COVID. Now, two years ago, no one wanted to treat COVID. I was like, that's a really niche market in Australia. I don't, I'm not doing that. Like, mm. but it was, how funny is it that subconsciously, I guess she planted a seed. I don't know. I don't know how it came, you know, full turn. And here we are supporting people through COVID. It was just mm. bizarre. So, you know, Getting back to my original point, there are so many things that you can do for any one scenario. It's just about working out what those things are for you. And if you can't work out what those things are, that's why you seek the help of somebody who's been through what you've been through to help you. And that's going to be different for everybody. But I really think that's important, seeking out and finding out people who can help you in the simplest way to just put the next foot in front or the next step forward so that you can continue to to keep on moving forward rather than stay stuck in where you are. Yeah, and it, it, it unless you do that, then it's just going to be a, a never-ending Ferris wheel totally. of, of it just continuing for weeks, months, years, years. And that's where I guess you see the people when it's been possibly years, they come in and it's like, I'm at this point right. where it could have been reduced, taken differently if things were just you know I see one of two people I see the people that are at the start of their health journey that are all excited and ready and firing and I see people that are at the absolute end and you're their last resort um I don't see the in-betweens generally it's just the nature of it I guess but but you're right It, it is um it's it's literally about what is the one next thing that I can do to feel better What's the one next thing that, you know, just keeping it simple. Mm -hmm. It's really important to keep it simple because, well, if we don't, it's just stressful. And there (laughs) we are again with that word. (laughs) It's not simple. It's, we complicate things. Yeah, it's overwhelming, you know. Um, So, like I said, I think it's just about if you can't figure that out for yourself because you've cleaned out a drawer and you've gotten conscious Mm -hmm. and you've done all those things and still you're not there, then sometimes it is asking for help, who can help me? Or sometimes it's listening to, or, you know, reading. I find reading and listening to podcasts to be really valuable because something clicks in my mind and I'm like, oh, now I get that part of whatever it is I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. Um, There's so many things that we can do to help ourselves. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And I think that it can be, again, that simple of, one, just taking assessment of life, Two, then seeking, okay, what's the the next person or the next thing that can help me? And I think that's for a lot of people, they don't. They don't want to. I know for me, like especially during, you know, new business phases and all that sort of stuff, it was like I'm at a point where, again, things were getting overcomplicated for me because I didn't know. Right. And it was like I need to ask someone. And then as soon as I asked that person, it was a simple solution but I think where we get stuck to, and I spent far too long asking people for advice that didn't know or hadn't actually done the work done or that. done, yeah. right? <laughs> they were telling me what they thought I should do and not actually have ever lived through that experience. Whether that's, I don't know, something as simple as what dosage to take of a supplement or how to publish a book. Yeah. You know, I think going to that person that has done it is really important. We can save a lot of time and energy yeah. and a lot of heartache, actually, if we just get the, you know, cut to the chase. But I think there, there is, there's a lot of people out there that, uh, you know, I guess, a- able to give advice. It's about how do you get the right advice, which is <laughs> another whole conversation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's it's the whole, um, uh, for for a lack of a reference here it's one that I had a laugh about with my partner the other day of like the relationship coach that isn't in a relationship yes and exactly they can maybe tell you all the wrong things to do and what to avoid but what are the actual right things to mm-hmm. do and and you can get that from a book you can get that from a podcast I think people think that oh no it's just a book like it won't have you those can things. absolutely get all sorts of things from anywhere it's actually just being you know, in a position where you're ready to hear it. Yeah. yeah. 
and sometimes we, we want to be ready, but we're not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, can, how do you turn that part on? But yeah. it's unpacking and, 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 you know, moving through layers to really get to that point. Yeah. Mm. But isn't that interesting though? You, it, it comes up in so many different areas. The person giving financial advice that's broke, the person that's saying to run a business that's never run a business yes. or how to run a business. Yes. The, you know, it could be a parent that's saying, go to uni, do this and do that, that didn't do that path. And I think it... it ins- and health professionals too. Oh. Pff. Plenty. Plenty. Yeah. And I think this is also, you know, again, there's a place for everybody. But unfortunately, at some point, a lot of health coaches took things to a level that they weren't qualified to take it to. Mm-hmm. And kudos to them for like giving it a go, but that can be dangerous as well. You know, uh, there's nothing that compares to hands-on experience and clinical hours. And so whilst the intention is definitely coming from a good place, um, it is, it's frustrating as well because it's like, you, you know, we go to university for many, many years to learn this um, and then see many, many patients to be able to give that advice It'd be nice if we could fast track time for many reasons, but you can't. So it's I, I work with a lot of health coaches and I really, one of the main things I say to them is stay in your lane as a health coach. You are very powerful as a health coach. Yeah. Um, you don't need to be a doctor. You don't need to be, doctors need you, you need doctors at the yeah. end of the day. So how do I get in, in, especially in business, encouraging them to be own who they are fully? Yeah. There's an amazing role. I'm I'm currently investing in a health coach to fill in the gaps that I couldn't fill and my doctor couldn't fill, um, and purely based on their experience in the industry. Um, but again, I you know when when things aren't working properly, and again, I need to practice what I preach. If I'm not getting care, then how can I give care to others? Yeah. And how can I expect other people to trust me with their care? So it goes full circle, but but it is very important that we find the right people to support us. And I guess that can be difficult because finding those people and finding your, I call them your cheer squad, finding your cheer squad takes time to curate over a period mm-hmm. of time. When you're with the right health providers, however, I do find that one will recommend the next person that will recommend the next person and you get yourself a nice little cheer squad. Yeah. You shouldn't be afraid to go to your health professional to ask a question. <laughs> Shouldn't be, right? But we are. We're like, is this a stupid question or can I ask this? Or you should never feel, um, you know, in a position where you can't ask questions and that you can't be curious around what the next step is in your health or what needs to be done or, you know, anything to do with that. We shouldn't we, – we, that, that model is outdated mm-hmm. where you went to a health provider, they told you what to do and you went home and you shut up and you just did it. That doesn't work anymore. People want need to know why. Um, to be able to adopt those principles. We, and that's also stepping out of operating out of fear mm-hmm. and operating out of empowerment. Yeah. Mm. And it's really taking that step to, you know, with all these up levels that we've had, take ownership of our life. No one else is going to come in and, and do all these things for us. No one's going to really assess nice it. It'd be really nice if they did. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can ask for guidance on yes. what, what do you see that I'm not seeing? Very true. And then take those steps from there. But yeah, it, it's it's interesting to see, uh, even from my industry and um, you know the people I've been mentoring and, and definitely been a thing that I've been asked before is you know whether it's health advice or whatever. And it's like it's not my mm-hmm. not my space. That's there's a line there. There's a boundary yeah. there. Um, but I think I think contrary to what um, you might have previously thought, mm-hmm. until you actually started to say that, people respect that so much. Yeah. Rather than you pretending. Mm. to be able to give advice on something that you don't know. And, you know, I mean, I get asked to treat babies and children all the time, like, oh, not my lane. Like, I – or cancer, not my lane. Like, very happy to hand that over because it's not my zone of genius. So, you know, I think that we all can learn from – once we do that once and we realize how good that is and how right that is, then – um, we'll do it all the more and people will appreciate you for being transparent around that as well. Yeah. Mm. I feel like it also relates back into our personal lives. Like if we are transparent with like the things that we can do, like you were saying before, overcomplicating things, things that we can do. If 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 we're, you know, the, the whole cleaning the house, yes, we can do it, but it's obviously, it's taking up time and all these other things. Can we then outsource that and what would that free up for us? Like, once you do it, I think once, it, you start to go, okay, 
own who you are. Like, do you want to be doing the cleaning every day? No. Can you afford, have the resources to get someone else in? If it's a yes, then yeah. And then you'll start to, I think it's like, like you said, the little steps of like, you do it once, you then start to see it happening in other areas. Can I tell you when I actually just committed to getting the cleaner, which sounds so ridiculous, just it's not that it, big a deal, right? It took, it's, but it did it take it a while? It took years. Yeah, okay. Years. And years. I resisted yeah. for years. I'm like, we've got a tiny house. We don't need a cleaner. I can do I it. Can, I can do it. It'll take right? all Sunday, but I'll do it. But can I tell you, <laughs> once I did that, I was like, I was happier. I'd come home and I wasn't overwhelmed because there was... You know, I'd, I'd thought, oh, yeah, I'll clean the shower on this day. And then, you know, two weeks later, you haven't done it because it's a low vibe task to me. But, you know. Two weeks, like two months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can find some funky things growing after a few weeks in there. <laughs> um, I, I said to my husband at one point, I actually have this sense of calm when I walk in the door because it's just done for me. And it wasn't that it was being cleaned 24-7. It was only once a week, but I knew that it was done. In my mind, the box had been ticked and I created space. And I was spending that time doing other things that I was good at and that I loved doing. And then the same with the, like I said, the same with the um, groceries. But then it makes me think, what else can I, <laughs> what else can I do that I, could, to free up more time? Yeah. And then I started to challenge myself, how much can I free up? Yeah. How much time can I actually free up? And I love that because... Just like you, you know, I like to go at a fairly fast pace, a high level pace in that um, really, you know, makes me feel alive. Um, and, but at the same time, other things were slipping because I didn't have time. So, you know, nutrition might slip, movement might slip, even sleep might slip because I've gone and, for example, I need to, I've got a deadline, I need to get stuff done, but we also need food in the house and, and, and I'm stressed out because the house is dirty. So, you know, if I actually look at how that goes, it's like I've just actually delegated those two things so that I can actually focus on the task. I don't have to work till 10 o'clock at night. I'm happier, everybody's happier. I get to actually just de-stress. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I wonder where else we can delegate things. Yeah, and, and the snowball effect of like you don't do that thing kids have to eat the stuff oh, yeah, there's that. and then there's, yeah. the, uh, they like do. they remind you if they're hungry too like not just once but <laughs> kind of every 45 <laughs> seconds if they haven't been fed so you kind of want to make sure you tick that box it's kind of important yeah <laughs> and, and i feel like if those things just snowball even if you live alone or whatever it may be it, it, you're only just adding to the pile and yeah I, I think it's a good question for everyone listening or watching you know what's that one thing that you can free up what's the well how do you create one extra hour yeah. or just schedule it in and see what happens and then yeah what what else can you do to to free up time like what you don't what are you doing you don't need to be doing yeah. and i don't know what that is for other people those two very simple things i think in business that's where i really went um like a bull in a china shop delegating because i was doing everything and that was only a result of over time you know, I had staff on maternity leave. So I was like, oh, it's fine. I can kind of cover it in the meanwhile. Disaster. Disaster. Like that was the stupid. But anyway, I did. You live and learn. I'll never do that again. Um, so, you know, you, then you start to create these habits where you're doing more that actually isn't serving you, that isn't serving anyone outside of you. Um, and it becomes a bad habit. And so then you – so. It's definitely the one thing that I did in the last two years. I, I delegated out so many tasks because I just don't need to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not I'm not good at it. So I didn't spend all of you know the last twenty years creating businesses and doing all these things to then still be at the point where I was working the same as what I was when I started. Yeah. It's different if you're starting out. Yeah, it's a different phase of your life. But even then, I still still think you can do it with. A level yeah. of ease and calm. Yeah, and that was what I was just about to ask. I'm like, what if, what if someone right at the start was going to have that? I, like, because even I see that with you know the app sort of stuff. There's definitely I know my limits in certain areas. Definitely a lot of time and effort to put in to know, but straight away I'm looking at okay, where can I offload this because it's then set and done. And I think for a lot of people starting, you know, if they're starting a business, mm -hmm. they've got a product, they've got a brand, they've got a, a social media platform they want to you know be on and create it 
does take time and effort. Going to the gym, starting a new nutrition plan, Mm -hmm. it does take doing the work. Mm -hmm. But like you said, then the other ways of things that you can add on, like, you know, for nutrition, I think one of the ones that has helped me so much just even over the years is like meal prep. Yeah. And you can even outsource that now too, you can. and get it in. And you can if you and if you want to, and you might you might really loathe meal meal prep, or you might really love it. And if you really love it and you find it therapeutic, maybe that's actually considered downtime. It's yeah. not work. Um, you can define what that looks like for you. But I think there's you can you can totally uh, you can pretty much outsource anything. <laughs> Pretty much can, other than yourself. You can't be, you can't do that. You have to be you. But I think it's it's a very smart thing to figure out how, how you know to do that. And I think also we can initially have so much resistance to doing that. Mm. And I bet you there's people listening going, "Oh, I can't do that," but or "Or that's indulgent." Is that is that just an ingrained mindset? Yes. Like yes. I know that my parents, my dad, don't get anyone to do anything that you can do. Right sort of mentality right but the thing is you don't get anyone to do the things that you love and you're good at you get people to do the things you don't love and you're not good at Mm -hmm. it's absolutely no no um benefit to fixing the pipes at home (laughs) even though maybe you can do it but maybe you can't and then messing it up and then needing to call a plumber to come and fix everything Uh sure you might be able to do it you might even be actually more than able to do it but would you be better off spending time in your business working on things that are going to get an outcome and calling in a plumber or are you better off just fixing it yourself? I guess it's a matter of what's actually going on and what's wrong with something. <laughs> but, you know, um, and, and if you like that, like my husband is a problem solver. If something's broken, he wants to work out how to fix it. Whereas I'm like, just pay the person to fix it. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, I'm not paying the person to fix it. So, you know, that's obviously you know why we're married but he will sit there and figure out how to fix the fridge or fix the dishwasher never quite looks the same though (laughs) 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 but he's ticked away he's happy with himself no truthfully I mean that's what that's what he finds interesting he studied electronics he wants to work out how to fix that me on the other hand I can't think of anything worse Mm -hmm. such a waste of time for me Mm -hmm. so Again, that there's no definition of what this has to look like. It's just you creating this for yourself and trusting yourself enough that you actually can do that. That's the other thing. We second guess ourselves and it's the worst thing that we can do because 10 out of 10, I'm going to tell you, if you trust your intuition, you're on the right path. Mm-hmm. 10 times out of 10. Um, it's only when we second guess that and don't trust that that we f- find that, you know, we know we've all been in that position where we've gone against our gut feeling. It's like, oh, this is a disaster, isn't mm-hmm. it? I could have told myself, but I did it anyway. <laughs> 100%. And, and you know, e- even recapping, like, because I know a lot of people would be listening to this and just going, okay, such great content. Like, there's so many different avenues we've been down on, like, simple tips, simple things that you've done in your life, I've done in my life, that can produce a different result for people. Less, whether it's less stress, um, more free time, or even just the awareness of being like, okay, I want to create more time in there. When it comes down to the simple things, because I know that you know that there's so many questions, and if you want to get questions answered, come to our live show next week. Um, <laughs> if you listen to this yes. in the right time, yes. But in terms of a you know from a, a health perspective, from a, a, a mindfulness perspective, from a lifestyle perspective. The one hour, is that the first thing you would say? Just just create that one hour. Well, I'm saying this at the moment. There's many things you can do. Remember yeah. I said that. But I think how can you carve out? Well, first of all, can you carve out one hour? Because yeah. there's people here saying, oh, hell no, I cannot. And also I'd ask the question, why can't you? Yeah. What is it that's stopping you? Is it that that, you know, you, that feels overwhelming? Is it that you've never thought about it? Is it that you're actually just blocking and you're just resistant to the thought of it? Like why? Why couldn't you carve out one hour and be really curious as to why you can't? So so the step is yes, carve out an extra hour. But if you can't, we need to figure out why you can't. And if you can't, you need to prioritize things in a different order. Mm-hmm. Look at that as being an a absolute priority and just try it on for four weeks. Mm-hmm. 
even two weeks. Just try it on and see what happens. And it's interesting because when we prioritize what's actually important, everything else just shuffles to fit in line with it. You'll find that nothing nothing bad will happen generally unless – we're not saying to ignore the children. <laughs> we're not saying to throw them out on yeah. the street. But how do I – you know, is it that you have to – to create this space – do you need to go to bed an hour earlier and rise an hour earlier to have the hour? Do you need to schedule in a lunch break because you're like 90% of entrepreneurs, I made that statistic up by the way, that don't take a lunch break? You know, is that where it needs to be? Just try it and see. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's two parts to it. Like I said, are you resisting it? And why are you resisting it? Mm-hmm. Um, and get curious around that. Yeah. And I think for... My own made-up statistic here. One hundred percent of people <laughs> listening to this, um, you know. Well, we're loving it. Actually, actually, asking yourself that because it it is awareness, mm-hmm. and I think that's that's a big step in anything that we want to do, or even just becoming aware of ourselves. Mm. We, once we're aware of things, then we can start making yeah, changes. Yeah, one hundred percent, and that's all it is. Again, it's being aware of why that feels really uncomfortable to have an hour, and is it because your dad has always told you that? You can do it, you know, that, that if it's if you can do it yourself, why get someone else to do it? Like, unpack it. Mm-hmm. What is it fundamentally? What is the story that I'm telling myself as to why I couldn't do that? Um, I really think that there's, yeah, I do. I know there'll be people listening going, I can't do that. So, we'll see them next week though, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's your challenge. Whenever you're listening to this, can you carve it out? And if you can, and if you're finding the benefits of it, Reach out to both of us yeah. or tag us in your story of, of doing that thing. Yes, I want to be tagged in the story. We Definitely. love a story tag on Instagram. Yes, please. I want to see what you're doing with your one extra hour of downtime. Like if even if I go to put that into my thing now of like outside of my morning routine mm-hmm. and the things that I do for myself, uh, an extra hour at first when you said that, I go, oh, there's a lot to get done this week. But what could that extra hour be that's not something that's oh, I could work on something else where it's like, no, no. But what if the extra hour meant that when you actually sat down to work, you were so freaking productive that you got done in what would normally take you six hours, you got it done in four? Yeah. What if that was the case? Because I think, again, um, that's a side effect of having more time to operate outside of, you know, the tasks it make it doesn't it just by default's going to make you more productive it's going to make you happier it's going to make you healthier there's many benefits to that I, I, and and i don't think that even if that one hour like you said you went for a walk mm-hmm. i don't think you're going to return from that walk being like i'm i, I feel so much worse for going for that right. walk right yeah exactly more stillness in the yeah. day even just that hour is is going to create so many good on flow effects yeah. from there so hashtag life hacks with Nat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We have a, another live event coming up next so week. So excited. Which for those that get onto this within a, a very short amount of time, um, you'll be able to buy a ticket. Come yes. join us. Our last one was awesome. This is very different. Um, last one was more workshoppy kind mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. seminar style where this is live show where just q a whoever's in the uh, audience just, it's my favorite type of event because you learn so much by listening to other people's questions there's so much oh me too that goes yeah. on like oh, i'm so glad that person asked that i had the same question yeah. um there's just yeah i love that yeah and, and i find that this one's going to be um you know very interesting compared to the last one like again that's why i choose the different themes of wellness of confidence of self-love we have uh dr sarah jane uh, a good friend of mine and then georgie collinson and and you know both of them as well Mm -hmm. so it's like it's going to be a really good chat i'm sitting with the girls um (laughs) yes having a chat about all the topics but i also have my perspectives on things so it is going to be really cool to share that dynamic but also share that with a live audience and i feel like that for me the events that we've held together, uh, the one other event. Um, I love that stuff. And I love being able to give people a chance to, you know, to, to really come and see you and ask you a question. It's booking at a time. I know you're booked out a lot. <laughs> but it's not even that. It's just getting the ball rolling. It's like, what's the one next thing that I can do? It exactly. doesn't necessarily always have to result in a, a one-on-one consultation. Yeah. You know, I, my whole 
aim is to become irrelevant in people's lives because we have taught them what they need to do. Yeah. That's, that's whether it's a patient or somebody that follows me online or wherever it might be. How can I teach you? Yeah. And then you have the awareness that you don't even need me. You're just following me for entertainment now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's also that aspect. Oh, I'm just joking. You, you I'm can just get joking. a lot of that from your... <laughs> I, just, I just like to talk, you know. <laughs> Same. That's, that's, hence why the podcast. That's how we got here, isn't it? Show. Well, we, you know, you've sat with us for an hour now. Oh, and go if, me. If you've enjoyed it, then uh, you enjoy the live show. Three hours of us talking. Can't wait. Can't it's, wait. It's always interesting and fun yeah. when we catch up and talk. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for, for, for joining me again. It's really special to have people come back on the podcast two years later. So if, if you haven't listened to that one, go check it out. Very different. Two years ago was a different life. Yes, it life. definitely like, was. It was a long time ago and a definitely a different life. Pre a lot of the things that we spoke about, but I, th- I think the, the notes of keeping things simple mm-hmm. still are so true from then to now and always will be yeah. in life. So um, again, if you've enjoyed this, if you're inspired by something, if it's triggered you in some way, yes. if, if that one hour has become you know, your new goal, mm-hmm. please share that yeah. on your story. Please tag do. Nat, tag myself. Um, we'd love to see it and, and reach out in any way if you need any support in those areas. Come to the live show. It's going to be such a vibe. Um, but then also on top of that, like, you know, share this with someone else that's also probably got the same sort of um, symptoms that we talked about or maybe going through the same sort of things or maybe the same sort of things that you're going through that yeah. might need a little bit of advice, mm-hmm. just a conversation to listen to. This is where I learned most of, as you were saying before about podcasts, my long drives, I would just listen yeah. because there's going to be something that clicks and something that you can, the one thing mm-hmm. that you can then implement and then that'll lead to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So, Thank you so much. Thank you again. Everything you do. Oh, thank you. you Thank you for having me. And thank you for creating a space that we can have these conversations as well. I love it. I love it. Me too. Thanks so much for joining us. Until next time, everyone. Peace. Thank you for joining me in that incredible episode and conversation. I hope you got so much value from it. And what I want you to do is to make note of what stood out for you and start to implement that in your life. That's how we make changes and those changes will then change our lives life. If you want to connect with me and the podcast, just go to my Instagram, Carlo underscore Cirillo. Check out all the show notes below for any links or notes that I've taken from this specific episode. And I cannot wait to share more conversations with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Please like, subscribe and uh, leave a rating and review. That would mean so much to me. So grateful for you. Take care, everyone. Peace.